Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, I want to present to you uh, the next uh, character that I want to play in uh, the Sanctum League after the, in my opinion, very, 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 very freaking successful EK Ignite League starter up to uh, the mid-game budget, in my opinion. And now I want to play something different. Since uh, a lot of people would like to see some uh, love to melee skills, I decided to go and play melee skill. And now you might wonder like, yo, wait a second, dude. It's Sanctum League. What what the hell do you want to do with a melee built in Sanctum? As we already know, it's uh, not that good. Um, and honestly, I think just the better your character is, the easier the Sanctum will get, right? So this is just something um so in league start scenarios definitely I, I do highly agree with that but i think at some point you're gonna have so much damage and um speed and survivability and relics for example um you know that you're gonna make your runs like a lot easier over time because you have like extra resolve more inspiration extra coins extra whatever you know so the the more sanctum you play the easier it's gonna get and the better your build's gonna be the stronger it's gonna be as well you know so i'm not too worried about that one and uh yeah so i would say let's start with the basics what is the idea of this build okay and nope, there is not going to be any uh, map showcase or anything like that. This is just like a theory craft, uh, kind of like how this build could uh, put together, basically, or, or how we can put this together. And I would say, first things first, uh, whenever they released the um, the trailer, the announcement, the live stream, and showcased a bunch of new stuff and uh, reworked stuff, um, they also showcased um, the revamped Voidforge. And Voidforge lost actually damage, so the older version had like a 50% or something, or 30 to 60% increased physical damage, that's now gone, but it now has 700% uh, of weapon physical damage as extra damage of a random element. It used to be 300%, so we got a 400% weapon physical damage as extra damage of a random element. So Voidforge, in my opinion, um, like... I always wanted to play a Voidforge build, but I never got myself uh, to do so. Last league, I wanted to do the similar or the same build, basically, that, um, as I want to try it right now. Um, but, you know, it was so ending the league, and uh, I was like, ah, oh, man, I'm too lazy to level our character, and I'm actually done with the league, and blah, 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 you know, so... Um, but therefore, um, this league made it even better with the buffed uh, uniques. For example, one of those is the Voidforge sword, and the other ones um, we're going to talk about uh, in a bit. But we got some better and, and, and crazier tools to work with this time. So what Voidforge is basically doing is you're going to stack a, a lot of physical damage, and you're going to get a shit ton of physical as extra of a random element, but it says deal no non-elemental damage. That means even if I equip this Voidforge now and I just do my default attack, you see it has no damage. And why is that? Because I deal no physical damage and the weapon has physical damage. So there's two ways of uh, approaching this. One would be, um, let's go into cold conversion to get at least this um, bit of physical damage that we have and convert into um, in, 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 K, uh, in, in cold damage, for example, or we just ignore it completely and just stack physical damage because every single auto attack will have now 700% physics extra fire, cold, lightning, fire, lightning, fire, cold, you know? Every time you hit, it's 700% physics extra. So all we need to do is basically stack fat physical damage. And there is like two things. One is the Trinity support that works wonders with that because um, we need to hit two times with a very high element to get the, the resonance, right? And since our Void Forge alternate between the element all the time, we're gonna secure Trinity support uh, without doing anything else. I don't need to do like a T1 lightning, T1 cold damage on my weapon to maybe get a higher cold damage, a higher... No, it doesn't matter. Every time it, it like alternates between the elements, so um, we're gonna hit fire and cold, and then we're gonna have like the full Trinity support. So that's like free big damage since Trinity is one of the best support gems in the game. But uh, we're going to do this a little bit more tricky in adding a Bloodthirst support. So this is a support gem that barely anybody ever uses. But what it does is you reserve your life. and Or at least you should reserve your life. Because the more life you reserve, the more flat physical damage is going to get added um, to your weapon. So the more we reserve, the more damage we get. And since we are really in big need of flat physical damage... Um, this is like a, a pretty cool style, so we're gonna get a low life Voidforge build going. So how? what is another good way of scaling flat physical damage? I mean, Abysses. I mean, Abysses is like 40 to 60 physical damage to attacks. This is 
huge, especially on a Voidforge build. This is going to get a lot of damage and increased crit multi and all attributes. Everything super sweet uh, on this one. But there is one major downside of, uh, to this helmet. And this is 45% increased physical damage taken. This is a more multiplier to the damage you get from like auto attacks or whatever physical damage it's going to be. So we need to um, build our character in a way that even though we get like 45% increased physical damage, and this is not like a, just an increase, it's I take 45% more damage or increased damage, which is a more multiplier, right? And the way to counter this one is by stacking endurance charges or armor, determination and so on. As you already saw, I got like a determination helmet chant on my abysses here. So what we're going to do is I want to scale endurance charges and armor to counter the effect of abysses. And since we are slayer on this one, um, we gonna uh, we have a note um, that basically says the masterful form. This is a, a technique that I used in the past as well. Your maximum endurance charges is equal to your maximum frenzy charges. What that means is you are stacking frenzy charges and you get endurance charges out of that, right? At least the maximum amount. So maximum charge is always like three power, three endurance and three frenzy if you can generate them, right? Um, but what it means is if I get one max frenzy charge, I have four max frenzy, four endurance max and three power charges because of masterful form. So instead of like a scaling into the endurance charges, we're going to simply stack um, frenzy charges. So if I get one, two, three frenzy charges on my tree, I also have then plus three maximum endurance charges. And as uh, using the replica Pharos 4, it says gain up to your maximum number of frenzy and endurance charges when you gain cat's agility. So um, basically this uh, replica chest um, will like the, the normal replica uh, Pharos 4 gives you power and frenzy charges. This one gives you uh, frenzy and endurance charges, which is perfectly suited for the master full form. So what um, and it also says, um, what is it? Um, Aspect of the cat has no uh, reservation. So what we need to do is we're going to get any like item that has Aspect of the cat. So as soon as I activate my Aspect of the cat and it cycles into the cat's agility, you're going to see that I'm going to get up to like six um, frenzy and um, endurance charges. And this is basically going to stay uh, permanently, so I can even count those um, in into my resistance, for example, right? So there is one problem. As you're going to see here, um, my charge is going to fall off before my cat's agility is back up. Because it cycles uh, between the cat's agility and I think cat's stealth or something. And one is like, I don't know, six, seven durations. The other one is like four or five durations. There is two ways of countering that. One would be um, the charge master with 100% increased charge duration. Or... Um, another like pretty cool trick you're gonna get a less duration support on your on on the item that has cat uh, aspect of the cat so what this does as you see here it's like four seconds plus um or uh, like seven or eight seconds plus four seconds because the other one is uh, lasting longer eight seconds right so it's 12 seconds if i put in my less duration now um and like reactivate the thing you're gonna see it's like three seconds and two seconds and four seconds and two seconds so we like half the duration of our cat stealth and agility and therefore um 100 um enable permanent frenzy and, and endurance charges and since every endurance charge gives me i think four percent physical damage mitigation um that would be already like 24 percent plus determination and so on so this is gonna hopefully help and fix our um abysses stacking or damage stacking uh, source over here and then they um, introduced, uh, wait, I think there's like another one. I just uh, put an item in every tab so I can explain real quickly before spoiling the entire thing, right? So, um, since we're using uh, the Void Forge and we're going to deal um, fire, cold and lightning damage and it's going to be a crit based build, so we're going to inflict um, freeze, shock uh, and ignite. The problem is we are not scaling any of these uh, ailments, but what we can do is using secrets of suffering, which comes from the interrogation um, unique small cluster jewel, which says cannot ignite, chill, freeze or shock, but critical strikes inflict scorch, brittle and sapped. So these are alternate elemental ailments. So, you know, if I, if I make a crit with a fire damage, I am going to inflict an ignite, right? But instead, we're going to inflict Scorch. And what these three uh, three things are doing, Scorch is lowering um, the elemental resistance of the enemy, which is good because, hey, we're using Void Forge. We're dealing all three um, elemental sources. So if we lower all the resistance of the enemy, every single hit 
will be like very powerful. Let's assume I have like flammability. Monster take like increased fire damage or less fire resistance, right? Then only one third of my damage will be benefit from then, which is the uh, fire portion basically, right? But with Secrets of Suffering, with the Scorching effect, we are gonna lower the all resistance, therefore hitting all three elemental base types. Then um, we get Brittle instead of Freeze and Brittle does um, giving you base critical strike chance and all of these things um, scale the same way as like shock and freeze based on your ailment or non-damaging ailment effect that we're gonna go in a second and then the last one is sap and sap is basically um, reducing the damage that you take from the enemy so if if the guy let's say is um, the maximum stats basically I, I think is scorch is like minus 30% uh, um, to all uh, resistance or elemental res to all I think it was elemental resistance then we have Brittle, which gives me up to uh, plus 6% base critical strike chance. And then we have Sap, which says 20%, um, I think less damage taking or, um, yeah, less damage taking. So instead of having a useless Ignite, a Freeze, a Shock or something, I mean, Shock is good, right? But instead of having like two or three useless ail uh, ailments, we're gonna have all three ailments that are gonna benefit our build. We take less damage, we have increased critical base strike chance, and we lower all the resistance of the enemy. So the interrogation of Secrets of Suffering is a, a very good fit in this uh, tri alley build. And then we're gonna go and scale increase of non-damaging ailments over here. And I think I have some uh, increased effect of non-damaging ailments you inflict with critical strike. So we already um, have like 100% uh, increased modifier on this. So I need to hit less to get a better effect. So it shouldn't be the worst thing or the harder thing to get the maximum effect because the higher your damage is, the higher your crit, the more Scorch effect you're gonna have so it can be zero percent to minus 30 so the higher i hit i want to get um 30 percent six percent and 20 percent so we get uh, the maximum benefits out of it good next up on the list is this beautiful flask here oriot's end so oriot's end um, is basically a flask that allows you to have explosions um this got released uh, this leak it drops from the uber uh, uber cyrus i think and uh, yeah, this is basically the same thing as my Void Forge. It says um, enemies you kill have a 30% chance to explode, which is already very, very high. Dealing a tenth of their life as damage of a random element. A random element is always fire, cold, or lightning. So basically the same thing as the, um, the Void Forge. You know, physics extra, fire, lightning, cold, like a random element. But now you have the, the issue that you cannot like focus on one type specifically, one elemental type, right? Um, so you would usually, if you say, you, you're, my build is a cold build, you wanna have like frostbite, or a, a, for example, as a curse to lower the frost resistance, right? If your build is a fire build, you wanna run flammability and stuff, right? But this time we could use early weakness, um, but there is another way of doing, um, like penetrating is probably the right keyword here, all resistance, and this is omniscience. So what Omniscience does, I mean, this is like uh, an amulet that got released a couple of weeks ago. It already got nerfed. I think it's still very, very powerful. So basically, you're stacking attributes and they get converted into Omniscience. And every 15 Omniscience, you get one to all uh, res and one to Elipen. So this is pretty good because now we're penetrating all resistance. So it doesn't matter if my hit from the Void Forge is going to be fire, cold, or lightning. We're just going to deal a, a massive amount of damage just because we're penetrating whatever we're going to get. So um, this is basically, yeah, very sweet because now we also get resistance from the nations, right? So we can just try to stack as much flat physical damage on our prefixes and life because of the bloodthirst support. And on our suffixes, we, we want to stack as many stats as possible to benefit from all the resistance and the elemental penetration. This will also work uh, for our Oriots and basically so our explosions is going to deal um, massive amounts of extra penetration and just going to deal massive amounts of damage as well as our uh, other stuff with the Void Forge with hitting and, and like, you know, penetrating whatever um, element we're going to get. And to finish things off, Based on a defense layer, there is this new Prognasis Flask. And Prognasis is basically the same as Petrified Blood, pretty much. So when you uh, when hit during effect, 25% of life loss from damage taken course over 4 seconds instead. So basically, that means you get 100 damage, but you take 75 instantly and 25 over 4 seconds. Which is basically pretty much the same as Petrified Blood. And since we're running a low life version anyways, 
right? We're gonna reserve about 50% of our life, get all the added flat physical damage from our bloodthirst support, but therefore we're gonna activate uh, petrified blood. So um, the damage that we get, a certain percentage is gonna get over time. Plus the prognosis flask, they are stacking multiplicative. So that means I'm not like, uh, shit, I should have done a research. I'm not sure which one of those counts first. I think the, um, the petrified blood is first calculate it and whatever is the rest of the damage um let's assume um um there is a guy that made like a pretty good video about it prognosis uh poe flask um i'm gonna link you that in the description below um let me just see if i can find it i think it's this guy here Yes. The life loss over time this guy has like a very awesome uh, YouTube channel and it does like very good uh, interactive mechanics and everything is there, how things is work, uh, working, right? And he explains exactly what it is. I just need to like sneak in here um, to see what comes first because he had a list over here. 40% of the rem Interaction with petrified blood. So, um... Is that they stack multiplicatively with progenesis applying first progenesis applying first okay so that means if we're gonna take let's say 100 damage and um, we have the progenesis progenesis pro genesis progenesis so we get 75 instant damage and 25 over four seconds right so now petrified blood comes in petrified uh, blood which takes the remaining uh, 75 instant damage and turns it into whatever your, uh, I think like 40% or something, right? So we're probably gonna end up getting like 50% on top, like instant damage and 50% over four seconds. So it's gonna be a massive dot whenever we're gonna hit. But since we're Slayer, since we do have Overleech and since we do stack uh, quite a, a, a nice amount of a maximum total life recovery per second and some other um, very powerful leech nodes. I think as long as we're not going to get one shot, we should be safe because we're going to regen a pretty um, insane amount of life back. That's basically Petrified Blood with Prognosis with Endurance Charge stacking, uh, covering our low life because of bloodthirst support so yeah this is basically the build idea it's it's uh, a lot of like very cool and special and unique ways uh, of making a character throw everything into a blender put on the power bar and just hope it doesn't explode and if it explodes i mean we have the flask right i mean yeah that was actually a bad joke but yeah I think it's gonna be a very interesting way to build around because flat physical damage stacking frenzy and endurance start stack, uh, stacking from the um the uh, replica Barrels 4 basically, um, then we have the interrogation with like ailment stacking, we have explosions, we have omniscient stacking, so attribute stacking, frenzy stacking, low life, trinity, void forge, omniscient, cyclone, slayer, whatever you want to name it or you want to call it, um, that's going to be the next build and I just hope this thing works out because the idea behind it I think is pretty pretty cool. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.